Hi, I'm Ryan. I had to do some surgery on my DJI Mavic Pro and I wanted to share it with you. I had bought this drone used in June of 2017 and about a month after I gotten it I just happened to be looking at the gimbal one day and I was like, hmm, that piece of plastic looks broken. So I went online, did some research and I found out that it's called the anti-drop hook. So I ordered it. Now what does the anti-drop hook do? In the event, this is what I believe, in the event of a front end collision, the force of the gimbal flying back, if that hook wasn't there to grab the plate that the gimbal hangs from, the gimbal could rip right out of the drone. So I think that's what it's there for. Also, it made mention in one article that it helps reduce, uh, they call it video jello. I guess when your video looks a little shaky. So, I knew I had to replace that. I did fly it all summer long, never really noticed any issues with my video, but I said this winter I'll replace it. Well, lo and behold, my fan starts acting up October-ish, and it got worse in November, and by December it wasn't even uh, turning on anymore. To the point, the bottom side of the drone was piping hot. Like, I mean, I grabbed it and I had to pull my hand away, it was that hot. So, I ordered a fan. Um, where I ordered them off of eBay, I'll put in the description below. So I knew I was going to have to replace the fan. I went online to research that. I really couldn't find a, a video with the fan being pulled out itself. So I recorded everything and I'm going to share that with you and hopefully it helps someone else. Now the original video that I did is like two hours long so I cut lots out and I do a lot of voiceover in it. Plus you'll also see that I uh, check the temperatures before and after and they're actually quite amazing. So I hope you like this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in subscribing to my page, feel free. I do a lot of randomness. So if you're not into that, I would understand. And um, I hope you like this video. Take care. Bye. It is already 60, approximately 60 degrees, 57 degrees Celsius. We'll try to keep it in the same spot. So about 60, 61. And back here, just before the camera, about 50, 53. So 85 degrees. And then right at the back, right before the camera in that little spot again, about 72-ish. Hmm, I just got the warning aircraft disconnected. Well, so I'm not getting a main board failure or anything. Now with the number six torque screwdriver, remove the two screws out of the back of the drone. Remove your battery if you already haven't done so. And remove four more screws that are found in each corner of the battery bay. Remember to pay attention to the length and size of each screw so you don't mix them up when you're putting it back together. Now with the unit flipped over, we need to remove these two covers. So take out these screws. This screw, for some reason, had a little piece of plastic in it. So you have to remove that as you can get your Torx screwdriver into it. So remove these cover screws. And then we're going to actually pop these covers off. Once you get the two covers off, remove the two screws that are up by the gimbal. Once you get those out, the two screws that were underneath that cover you need to remove also. These all hold the housing in place. Starting from the back of the drone with a pry tool, start separating the two halves from each other until you get part way up. Once you get part way up, you have to stop and use a pair of tweezers to disconnect the GPS wire from the board, as seen here. Now you can continue prying up on both sides until you get near the top. At this point, all you do is grab the back end 
and hinge it up and it'll disconnect completely from the bottom section. Now with the top removed, you need to disconnect these five connectors and remove these four screws. Using your pry tool, lift up these connectors gently and be careful as these ribbons could break very easily. The most difficult task was the two front connectors and ribbon wires as they have some glue over top of them and around them, which made them more difficult to remove. Plus, it kind of held the gimbal in place even though all the screws were out. So just gently work at it and the unit will come out. Pull it away and she slides right out. All right, we have our gimbal out. Now remove these three screws that hold the circuit board in place. Being careful with the ribbon cable. Now remove these two screws that hold your anti-drop hook in place. Now grab your new anti-drop hook and you're going to seat it in where the old anti-drop hook was. In this case, it didn't quite fit as it's 3D printed. so. I went and got my wife's nail file and filed it down. Now there, that's a nice snug fit. Replace the screws, tighten them only enough to hold it in place. Don't overdo it as you don't want to break the plastic. Now I'm going to show you how the gimbal and the gimbal plate hit up against the anti-drop hook. So that helps it. It's kind of like, I guess, a headrest in your car or a seat belt. It kind of slows down the deceleration so you don't rip the gimbal right out of place if you had a uh, front end collision. Now take your circuit board, put it back in place, replace the three screws. And after that, we're going to sit our gimbal off to the side as now we're going to work on our fan. All right, guys. So this is what we need to do to get our fan out. Now, we already have these two ribbon cables out of the way. So we have to remove this screw, this screw. There's a screw down here and a screw down here. Then you have to lift up this plastic sheet that is over the battery terminals. There's a screw right here, a screw right here, and a screw right here. Once you remove those, the battery terminal that is mounted to the fan outer housing will sit back over here out of the way. Then you have to disconnect your wire to the fan. You also have to remove this circuit board. So remove this screw, undo the wire, because the wire runs in the housing that holds the fan. So move that out of the way. Then you can take your fan out of the housing, replace it with your new one, and put it all back together, which I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so I started by removing those four screws that I said. Once I got those out, I tried to pull out the assembly and I realized it wasn't coming out that easy. So then I spotted the screws that are underneath that little plastic sheet. So I removed those three. And then that's the battery connector it will come off the fan housing and then you can get to your fan quite easily so that little circuit board in the front has to be disconnected 
because it's attached to your housing assembly for your fan. So once you remove that, you could take out the two screws that are holding your old fan in place. Now disconnect your old fan and replace it with your new one, making sure that you put it in the same way. Because remember, the fan pushes air only one way. If you reverse it, you'll be pulling the air out instead of pushing the air through your unit to keep it cool. So apply the screws that hold it in the housing. Set it back in, making sure all the wires are in the right locations, keeping the ribbon cables out of the way, and start replacing your screws. So make sure that circuit board is put in the right place. Put the wire back into the track so it follows the same path it did before you took it out. Now we're going to put those three screws back in that battery connector plate and screw that down. There, that's about it. You've replaced your fan. Now. We just have to put it back together and see if it works. Stay tuned for that. All right, let's take our gimbal, fish the wire through, which is your power supply. Now let's put the four screws back in that hold your gimbal in place. Now snap your ribbon connectors in place. The two back ones have some glue underneath them that kind of hold on that plastic little sheet at the battery connector. The front ones, remember I said we had to remove some glue to get them out. I don't know if they're going to stay in place or I will have to add glue to them later. I guess if I have a poor video transmission, I will know that uh, they are coming loose. But they did seem to snap into place, so hopefully they will hold. So we'll put our power connector back in. Now we're going to take our cover. And like we did when we took it off, we're going to hinge the front first. Then you have to go to the back and you have to connect that wire that's the gps wire in there there's not a lot of slack so you have to work in a very tight space but once you get it in just push it all down and let's see if she's going to fire up oh fan just kicked in so that's perfect. Woo! There we are, guys. So the fan had died. That is so good to hear. All right, guys. All that's left is to put our screws back in our housing. So let's start by putting those two screws underneath those covers. Then 
we'll put the covers back on snap them into place and put the two slightly shorter screws that hold those covers down then we'll put the screws in that are up by the gimbal then we'll flip the unit over we'll put the four screws that go into the battery bay and then the two screws on the back end where the GPS is and that's about it now let's check some temperatures and see how the unit is running Just in front of the camera. Hear that guys? 34 degrees. In the back. 38. I guess where the heat's exhausting, eh? It's probably building up there a little bit. Camera doesn't care for that. I can touch this. It's not hot at all. It's just warm. 35 degrees. 39 degrees. Beautiful.